We've seen Gen Z aestheticizing and loving the corporate lifestyle. And to be fair, there's a lot to love. You have the good pay, you have the snacks, you have the good benefits, and honestly, just the overall aesthetic of it all. But we have been seeing a shift. The corporate girlies are over it and more and more young people are starting to quit their corporate jobs. So what happened? What's up YouTube, it's Tiny C and welcome to my digital garden. <laughs> So I came across a few quitting my corporate job videos and it really had me thinking because earlier this year, the corporate baddie aesthetic and just overall the nine to five corporate life was being romanticized, aestheticized and Gen Z was all in it. But now we're seeing this shift. But one video in particular caught my attention. This woman in her mid to late twenties is talking about how she is leaving her high salary job. So let's take a look at that. I gotta be honest, I quit my corporate job that made me like $200,000 a year. Um, and all I can think about is working like back of house at a restaurant. Like I truly think that like, that's the only thing that will make me happy. Like the thought of going back into corporate America, it, like in any capacity just doesn't make me happy. Like I'm not like, the joy that it would be to like work on the grill, you know, serve up orders, quick, fast communication with customers. Like I miss, that's like what I want to do. So what's really interesting about this isn't just that she left a 200K corporate job, which is very interesting, but it's that she wants to leave and work on the grill, work in a customer service facing job. It's just a very interesting sentiment. Like, wanting to leave 200K for grill job. I don't know, I don't know. It might just be me. It's just making me think, is Gen Z perhaps romanticizing these types of jobs? And she isn't the only one that has these thoughts. I saw a lot of people in the comment sections agreeing with her sentiments. I'm a lawyer, but I swear my dream job is to work at the container store. I want to scoop ice cream for six weeks, be a florist in the spring, work at the museum for the winter, breakfast diner girl in the summers, and farm in the fall. And then of course some people, I just don't want to work at all, which yes, there's always those people there. I want to be a bar cart girl at a golf course. I'm dying to be the gym check-in girl simply sounds peaceful. There's a lot of ideas out there and a lot of people agree with this sentiment. I mean, it got a lot of views and a lot of people agreeing and she's not the only one that has posted videos like this where they've quit their corporate job and are thinking of going into a more minimum wage, retail, food service, customer facing job. And so this is a very interesting trend. So let's dive into why so many young people are leaving corporate America and what is the alternative, what do they want to do instead? For the people that were inspired and worked in corporate, what is the appeal now for leaving? I found an article on Culture Monkey, so we're gonna take it with a grain of salt. So let's get into this article, which is talking about 10 problems with Gen Z in the workplace, understanding what motivates them. Gen Z is projected to make up 27% of the global workforce by 2025, which is, you know, it's not a huge amount, but it's still significant enough. So how are Gen Z employees different from other generations? And this is a big, Thing because how Gen Z views a workplace versus maybe somebody that's a baby boomer or Gen X is like completely different. They like to talk about how they've grown up immersed in technology and social media, which I'm sure does have an impact. They say they value diversity, inclusion, social justice, and they actively seek out workplaces that align with their values. So honestly, let's just get into what those values are. Like, come on, they're teasing. So communication preferences, they prefer digital communication, instant messaging, social media, which can differ from traditional workplace communications, I guess. But then also I think a lot of corporations do use digital messaging like Teams, Slack, um, Zoom. So I don't know about that one. I feel like companies are moving towards more digital communication. Everything doesn't have to be a meeting anymore. At least I think that's my company. I might just be speaking for myself. Work and life balance expectations. Now this is a big one that I've seen and that a lot of people in these videos talk about. Work-life balance. They want to have the ability to prioritize their personal well-being. They don't want to just work, work, work all day and then they get off at like eight o'clock, right? And then maybe potentially still drowning in work or they just don't feel like 
they didn't want to do anything once they get home because they're so just stressed and kind of fried. They seek flexibility in their work arrangements and value time off and leisure activities. But of course, balancing the fulfilling personal life with the demands of the job can be challenging, which yeah, a hundred percent. When they were romanticizing corporate life, it was about how they just don't really do much. They might click something here, click something there, two meetings, and then they're just sitting around most of the day. But sometimes it's the opposite. It's work, work, work. You get home and there's still work to do, which I've seen some creators talk about. Career advancement, job security, job opportunities, which yeah, a lot of Gen Zers are going to jump if they see that there's no opportunities for growth, unlike the older generations who might stick around, stick around, stick around. Traditional work structures is another big one. They have a different perspective on workplace hierarchy and may prefer a more collaborative and inclusive environment, which definitely challenges the traditional structures and hierarchies that a lot of companies have. Everyone does not have equal say, and it's not really collaborative. Oftentimes it's like whoever has the highest amount of authority gets the final say, and it can be very, very frustrating. It can be very frustrating. It varies from company to company, how big it is, how small it is. But for Gen Z, this can be a struggle. This can be something that they just don't gel with. Another big one is mental health awareness of the employer. Gen Z definitely talks about mental health a lot. They value their mental health and their happiness, which is honestly why a lot of these people are leaving. They talk about how toxic the work culture is, micromanaging, all these things that just add stress and make your work life unbearable, like literally just traumatizing. That's a lot of the reason why Gen Z is leaving. They cite mental health issues and how they're treated, how much stress, how much of a workload they're given that just isn't conducive to a healthy mind or body. Desire for purpose-driven work. People want to have purpose again in what they're doing and oftentimes corporate. It can be like, what am I really doing here? I'm a cog in the machine type vibe. Coming to bed, honey? Yes, dear. And ultimately, a lot of corporations just might not align with Gen Z's values, and that's probably jarring. And seeing as a lot of them are just entering into the workforce or maybe have like four years, five years under their belt at a corporation, they're probably realizing like the ideas that they had before going in versus the reality of it all is causing them to rethink whether this is what they want to do. It's essentially the Gen Z quarter life crisis. Like corporate America is probably a big factor into why a lot of Gen Z is having a quarter life crisis which I've spoke about before. So let's look at this video where this girl is um, talking about why she's deciding to leave. I quit my corporate job. Mentally, I'm exhausted and my mental health came into like a key factor as to why I quit. I knew something was wrong when I would take my vacations and then I would dread coming back to work the next day. Even though I was recently promoted to a software engineer manager, I still was not happy. I didn't like the corporate politics. It was giving house of cards and I'm tired of playing my chess moves just to try to move higher up in the company. Honestly, I wasn't passionate about the work I was doing every day. Even though this is very daunting, I'm very ambitious about my future. I'm going to take one day at a time and figure it out, but I'll let you guys in on my journey. And again, we're seeing a lot of those themes that we went over with Gen Z values, like the politics, no movement forward, no passion. There is no passion, there is no vision, there is no aggression. They're just a little bit more willing to jump into the unknown than previous generations have. And if they see that they don't like where they currently are at, they're not afraid to just quit and see what happens, see where life takes them. I think people understand that mental health is above stressing yourself to death and getting sick because you don't like where you work. And in the end of the day, you're spending a lot of your life at the workplace, so you want to be happy. And that's just what Gen Z values and honestly, a lot of younger people value. And I know like a lot of the older generation probably will think, are they being realistic? Are they making the right decision? Is this smart? And I don't think this is a decision that they're making lightly, as we'll see in this video that I'm about to play. Did I send it? Yeah. I'm so nervous. Like, I'm not even joking right now. I'm so scared. This isn't funny. Like, it's not funny, but like, I laugh when I get nervous. You got hips in. Today's the day. About to resign from my position. I'm, I'm actually five, shaking. Five. I'm actually gonna cry immediately when I turn this camera off. Should I just do it? Yeah. Oh my god, my Don't stomach's gonna exactly. drop. I just did it. I'm. <laughs> 
a lot of these videos are similar. They're shaking, they're about to cry, they're taking this so seriously, and it's a scary thing to do. As someone that has also quit a job for the unknown before in my career, I know that it's like a leap of faith type of thing. And it's usually because you don't like where you're at. You don't like what you're doing at the moment. And the idea of being free of that feels better than staying somewhere that you're not happy. So I don't think this decision is taken lightly, but of course, naturally there's going to be some concerns. There's definitely concerns that come up when I think of Gen Z quitting their corporate jobs because what is the plan moving forward? Where are you going to go? Have you thought about it? Have you weighed the pros and cons? Some of the things that I was seeing that they wanted to jump into after leaving their corporate jobs was of course one influencer. 57% of Gen Zers said that they would like to become an influencer if given the chance. And of course, because they've grown up in the social media age, online, they just see it as a viable career path, whereas older generations might not quite understand how can you make a, a whole living off of working online and posting yourself. But it's definitely possible. But how many people are going to be able to achieve this? Is this something that you wanna quit your job to pursue? Another big thing that they wanna do is become entrepreneurs. Some people said they were going into selling ceramics, art. And I assume if this is something that you are considering, it's probably because you have a business idea and it's probably worth a try, especially if you're young. And of course, the last one, like we saw in the first video I showed, she is thinking of perhaps retail, food service, these sorts of jobs. It makes me wonder if they're trading one stress for the next stress. I think minimum wage jobs can be just as stressful, if not more stressful than a corporate jobs for different reasons. I think that they're equally as tough, again, if not harder. As someone that's worked minimum wage jobs, those were the toughest, most stressful, like mentally, jobs that I've ever had. Perhaps it was just the jobs that I took, but I definitely am not someone that would trade my current job to go back to that. And the first thing that comes to mind is the low wages. And although not all customer facing jobs, customer service jobs are minimum wage, a large majority of these jobs are. And inflation is getting worse and worse. The cost of living is going up and the first people affected is low wage workers. And so acting as though this is like something to romanticize. It's just, it might be coming from a naive place. I think that because Gen Z values happiness over pay, it might be why they're willing to overlook pay. If they can be happy, then I guess who really cares about the pay? And that's true to an extent, but also making sure that you have enough to pay the bills, pay the rent, and not have to stress about it. On a $74,000 salary, after rent, loans, housing, bills, and $300 for leisure spending, you might be left with 650 a month. Let's not even get into buying a house and all these other things, children, all of that. The price just goes up. And so again, wages is the first thing I think about when I'm hearing that they might want to trade corporate life for a lower salary job. Is it the most financially responsible decision to make? I read studies that were showing that actually having a low wage job adds a lot of mental stress. It leads to burnout, insomnia, irritability, anxiety. They're dealing with customers. They're potentially on their feet all day. There's just a lot of different stressors that minimum wage work brings. One stress for another stress. Politics, hierarchy, micromanaging, all the corporate stresses for another stress. I think a lot of people have this assumption that it'll be easy to find a minimum wage job because they're just a dime a dozen, right? But we're finding that even these places are not really hiring. You wanna see how crazy the job market is? Let me show you something. So this job, that sign has been up for at least five months. It's called Black Star Bakery or Black Star Cafe. It's on Waynesburg. I've applied there once or twice. Had someone reach out to me via email saying, Oh, I'm so sorry. Like we've been really, we've been really busy, and I was like, "Are you interested in scheduling an interview sometime soon?" No response. And that's just an example of how many jobs have a sign up that's been there for like months, and they're not hiring, they're not making moves. Martha's Country Bakery is another cafe. I don't care. I'm dropping <laughs> names. Martha's Country Bakery was like, they're hiring. Dropped off an application. The next day, the sign was gone. I went to another location. Same thing, sign was up, I applied, didn't hear back. Mind you, no interview, nothing, just no call back. Trying to find a corporate job or a customer facing job, no one's really having it 
easy right now. And yeah, if I just looking at the comments, like little Caesars near me wants experience. <laughs> you guys are the bottom of the barrel entry level. I'm dead. It took me nine months to get hired by a minimum wage job. Another six months to find a livable wage job. It's wild out here. I've applied to almost 35 part-time jobs in retail, no calls, and I have a management experience. Those that have, have scheduled three to four interviews only to ghost me. I'm tired of this. So we're seeing like, this is something a lot of people are dealing with. All of it can be extremely stressful and especially this problem of ghost postings. The job you applied for might not exist. Here's what's behind a boom in ghost jobs. Like absolutely ridiculous. What the heck is a ghost job? Fake job ads are proliferating online with more companies admitting to posting realistic looking job openings that don't actually exist. 40% of companies said they had posted a fake job listing this year. According to a survey in May of 650 hiring managers from career site resume builder. It's not something new, but it's being taken to a whole new level from what we're seeing says resume builders, chief career advisor, Stacey Haller. The roles spanned all levels of seniority from entry level openings to executive tier jobs. So <laughs> you better work harder, exactly. And some places are saying the goal is to signal to the current employees that they're replaceable, which is just wicked, it's evil. And unfortunately they're seeing like a positive effect from these fake job listings. 65% said the job ads had a positive impact on morale. 77 reported an uptick in productivity among workers. They're saying it's a positive impact on morale, but is it really like, or are they just scared for their job security? And so they're working harder. <laughs> They're being more productive out of fear. Hiring managers are largely on board with the practice. Seven in 10 said they believe it's morally acceptable, despite misleading both job seekers and existing employees. What world are we living in that people think this is morally correct to mislead people? All of that was to show that a lot of these jobs aren't even real. It's not easy to get a minimum wage job. It's not easy to get a corporate job. Jobs in general are just not easy to come by nowadays. All around there might be a lower quality of life because you just don't have the same amount of money that you have at a 200K salary job. And so I think this is something that we have to be mindful about. We have to think about these things. We can't just jump in with our eyes closed. I 100% understand valuing your happiness and putting that at the forefront. And I think everyone should do it, but do it with purpose, do it with plan and do it with your eyes wide open. Make sure you know what you're getting yourself into. And ultimately, I do think Gen Z is changing the workplace. As we see, the values that they hold are very important. And I think that they are very aspirational. That's a place that a lot of people would want to be having a better work life balance, having your mental health be considered by your workplace, maybe providing you with options to take care of your mental health, just overall paying people more. Like there's so many things that Gen Z values that I think the workplace can use, whether that's in corporate, whether that's in a retail job or whether that's as a small business or an influencer, I think Gen Z will overall be a positive benefit to the workplace. And I just think they need to find their footing first. Just like any other generation, they are going to make their mark because every generation has made their mark. Every generation has their time to change things. And so I do think overall what Gen Z is fighting for, what Gen Z wants from their work life is good, but they are also young. And so they have that time to try different things, try to be an influencer, try to be an entrepreneur, try a bunch of different things and see what fits your lifestyle the best, what makes you the happiest, but also be realistic. Make sure you know what you're doing. Make sure you do ample research before you make such a life-changing decision. And so this is a very interesting trend and Gen Z just might be tackling entering the workforce different than other generations have. They have been able to just have a different mindset when it comes to work because of the exposure they've had to all these different modes and methods of making money. And so very beautiful to see but also very scary, potentially concerning if they're romanticizing things, but I think they're going to work it out again. They're young, 
the oldest being what, 27? So they have time to figure it all out. What are your thoughts on the situation? I look forward to reading it in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next YouTube video.